Welcome to the Marketing Made Great podcast. In each episode, we'll be sharing with you the tips, tricks, and techniques from the top sales and marketing experts from around the globe that will make marketing simple for your business. Here's your host, Mark Traeger. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome you to another episode of the Marketing Made Great podcast. Real excited again today to have in the studio TJ Ware. Uh, she's the National Marketing Director for Exquisite Marketing. TJ, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Can I give me an idea of what Exquisite is all about and what you all do? Yes, yeah, so um, we are a full service marketing agency. Um, we specialize in working to uh, help clients create their brands or, you know, come up with a brand strategy. Um, and then we also take that brand and, you know, market it and create unique marketing campaigns um, to introduce that brand to their target market. So um, it's Great. like kind of two pieces to it. Okay, fantastic. Well, mm -hmm. I, the reason why I wanted you on the show is... From our conversations over the past several months, you've got some unique insights about, you know, company messaging, lead generation, and event marketing. Yes. So, you know, with so many options in marketing today, you know, the, the marketing landscape seems to be shifting constantly. Mm -hmm. So what are the, some of the things that most small businesses face when it comes to getting the word out about their brand? Is it messaging or having a gimmick or what is it? Um, I think the most important thing is for them to have a message first, you know, that's consistent with their core values. Um, and whatever that message is, if you, as long as you can stick to your core values, I don't think, you know, you could ever go wrong. And it's so important for companies to understand what that is, you know, because we build from that. Right. A absolutely. Having a, a clear understanding of what you're all about kind of like the why you do things. Mm -hmm. well, what's you know, your why? Well, yeah, what's your why? What makes that unique? So so what is it that you all do that helps them, you know, stand out? You know, I guess really the better question to ask is how is it that you all uh, help them draw attention to themselves? Because really what we're faced with today is that attention-driven economy that, uh, you know, they're begging for companies to stand out. So what right. is it that you all help them do? Um, I think in this day and age, it's so important for the companies to have the right content. Um, and I guess on a, on a scale of, you know, from the social media side, also into their community, you know, like right. your, your experience in itself, you know, from a content content perspective, right? What is it exactly? You know, making sure that everyone that's coming in contact with your brand gets the same experience, no matter if right. it's on site, off site, at a community event. Um, I think that's the most, I guess, important way. Right. Um, so we we hear about you know building content all the time for companies to do that. What type of content should they be doing? Is it Hey, look how great we are, or is it about how I, you know, what kind of value we can add or help them discover ideas that can help them become successful? I think that is the most important thing, you know, is to help them discover that because we run into, you know, where a lot of companies have just let, you know, marketing or agencies kind of just tell them what they are. Right. And um, if you, don't sit down and kind of help them discover that, you know, it's like a process of, you know, who am I, who, what, when, where, who, who should be purchasing our products? Right. Um, where should we be placing our products, you know, with an opportunity for it to um, be purchased by the people that we, sure. you know, we're presenting uh, services for. So Absolutely. when you look at it in that context, I think, you know, um, that to me is the most important Absolutely. The most important thing. No, absolutely. You know, we, we talk about all the time when we're working with people uh, about lead generation. You know, that's really the goal and lifeblood of any company is that lead that you get or opportunity to create a new customer. I mean, without a customer, we have, you have no company. Right. 
you know, what are some of the ways companies can develop an effective method or system for creating new customers? What's that roadmap that you all typically recommend? Um, we typically, you know, recommend that customers, for one, have a loyalty plan in place, you know, to once you get a new customer, you want them coming back. You right. know, oh, you sure. want to extend the lifetime value of that customer, you know, as, as much as you can. So having something like that in place, I feel like, you know, does help. But if you're just, you know, trying to attract new customers in general, um, there are several different ways you can, you know, you can go about doing that. Um, can you we, share one or two? Yeah, the community... Um, you know, relations that we, like the services that we offer for that, we say that being present in your community is super important um, because, you know, if the person across the street doesn't even know you're there, then what are we actually doing, you know? Sure. So creating campaigns that have you act, that where you're active in the community is, I feel like, the number one thing to do, depending on what, I guess, what kind of company or what industry it is. Sure. Because if we're talking... You know, um, I don't know, fintech industry or tech industry or auto, you know, automobile industry. Some of those practices are a little bit different, I guess. Right, sure, they're but unique to those industries. Right, yeah. right, it's unique. But if we're talking from a small business, like community type, you know, or brick and mortar, um, then I think that's one of the most effective ways to get new new clients and new customers is cool. that to be active in your community, be active with your chamber. Absolutely. You know, um, and, and I think that's one of those lost things that companies don't focus in on is being involved heavily within the community, mm -hmm. because when they see you, they're going to say, "Wow, that's that's something different. Never expected right. that." Right. You know, the, with the social media landscape changing, mm -hmm. and I know that you're heavily involved with Facebook on a corporate level. Yeah. W what are some of the things that, if you had to pick three or four really great things about Facebook and its marketing platform. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that, you know, one, two, three, or four things that people need to focus in on with Facebook, let's say? Um, I think that, you know, you have to advertise with Facebook. Like, you have to create... You mean I got to run ads? Yeah, you got to run ads. Uh, um, you have to... And not... I mean, you can boost your post. I mean, that's like for... You know, I guess the beginner stage, like if you would, you know, if yeah, you... Yeah, but wait a minute. Now, now, wait a minute. I'm a B2B business. You okay. still run Facebook ads? Yes. What? Absolutely. <laughs> you think you're going to create opportunities? I think so. You know, I think Absolutely. it's... Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. I mean, Facebook right. is still... I mean, even with them, you know, um, some of the things, the challenges that they've ran into as a, as a whole, like they right. still have 70 billion people... You know, right. logging a lot. So if you're not on Facebook, if you're not, you know, on on some of these platforms, social platforms, that you aren't being found, and right. that's just what it boils down to. Right. No, I understand. Yeah. And, and no matter who you are, you're mm -hmm. still on Facebook. Right. You know, everybody, whether you're a C level or whatever, you're still on right. Facebook and targeting. Yeah. You had made a, a comment recently about one of the new things that Facebook has is it Facebook groups or something like that. Um, Where I can put my team on a... Yes, the workspace. The workspace, okay. Yes. Well, tell us more about the workspace. So, like, I'm I'm not an expert specifically on a lot of the... Like, I'm not at liberty to, you know, go into, like, um, all of their list of products and services. Right, I understand Because that. even we, like, work with Facebook, you know, right. on some products and stuff that we, we're still, experimenting you know, with. experimenting yeah. with. But um, Workspace is a great platform for businesses that, you know, want to communicate with um, their team. Like, right. if they're looking for, you know... Um, it's, it's, especially if you have a lot of millennials working with you and they don't tend to like check emails or get updates. Right. Um, it just kind of helps streamline, you know, a lot of that communication. Um, and you kind of sometimes have to, you know, go with the flow of where things sure. are going or you end up sure. with some of these companies nowadays that are just shutting down because they didn't shift with the times as far as, right. you know, retail is concerned and online stuff is concerned. I mean, I think sure. Amazon has the market, like, right. on lock for that now. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Yeah, and Facebook groups, it sounds like, or, or Workspace makes yeah. a great collaboration tool. Mm -hmm. Now, you made a comment uh, just a moment ago about 
companies that either adopt the technology or get left behind. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen two companies in the news recently, Toys R Us and Sears. I mean, we're talking Sears has been around for over 100 years. Right. And Toys R Us, I mean, I've got two grown kids, but Toys R Us was like the the, the, the devil. It. Right. You know, they, that's all they wanted to do is go to Toys R Us to, because they knew dad would buy them a toy. Right. Well, you know, what happened with them is they didn't innovate. They right. they, they outsourced their e-commerce to Amazon. Mm. Are you kidding me? Really? Yeah. And because of that, it changed the whole way people buy from toys. Yeah. Buy toys. They buy them from Amazon. They didn't buy them from Toys R Us. Exactly. You know, and you look at companies like Blockbuster. You know, there's a when Netflix came, I knew Blockbuster's days were numbered. Yeah. And, you know, it's... It's unfortunate, right? <laughs> you know, because if you take that, if you take that and look at that on a small level, like what is it that you need to be doing in your own business on the level that exactly. you're on, you know, to stay up to date with all of that? And right. if Facebook Workplace, you know, can provide, you know, a way for you to communicate with your people, you know, that Absolutely. are working for you, keeping them, you know, up to date on, I mean any changes that may be taking place or how you greet customers or, you know, reviews that we may have gotten and things like that. Like the entire experience of what customers um, come in contact with, I guess, when they uh, are introduced to your brand is so critical. Right. It's important. And if you can, with a quick, you know, message, send an update to all of your staff on Workplace, you know, like, hey, by the way, you know, th- this is what's happening today. We had a customer come in, so we're changing order on these three items right. to um, to uh, to move forward in a positive manner behind this issue, and little small things like that. And that's just a that's just a tiny, you know. Well, well exactly. But I, I I think you'll agree with me too. I'm seeing a transition in business where if are not moving towards the technology or at least trying to understand it, you're going to get left behind. Yeah. You know, it's the old saying, and I say this all the time, either you create the wave, mm-hmm. ride the wave, or get crushed by the wave. Right. You know, it's okay. You don't have to be the innovator to create the wave, but if you're not at least riding it or at least trying to grab a hold mm-hmm. of the wave. Catch it by the coat, with right. the coattail. Or right. Catch it by the tail and, the tail. Ride, you know, hang on. Yeah. But, you know, I think most businesses are relying too much on the old way of doing things mm-hmm. and realizing that even us Boolennials are getting... Boolennials. Edu- <laughs> <laughs> Baby boomers with millennial tendencies are still it. struggling. You know, we're not as we're not as tech-savvy as the Millennials, mm-hmm. but you'd be surprised how many us Boolennials are tech-savvy right. and are relying on that. And I will say that, you know, depending on your your brand... Um, yep. how you reach customers, you want to mix that up. You want to have yep. some traditional, you know, marketing and advertising um, um, ways that you're reaching people. And you want to have the new, you know, like digital marketing, social media. You want to mix, mix those things. And so we kind of can come in and say, okay, based on what you have, this is what we feel like you should be doing. Yeah, based on your, your company, your right. product mix, your customer profiles, everything. Right. Here's the marketing product mix that you should be using to maximize your potential. Exactly. So, so one of the things that's starting to gain a lot of traction is this exper- experiential marketing. Mm-hmm. You know, this event type stuff. Yes. And being involved in the fishing and hunting industry for so long, I'm seeing more and more of that where the product is actually put into your hand so you can experience it. Yeah. So how can these kinds of things be used or leveraged into brand awareness? Um, Experiential marketing, you know, for because sometimes when you mention that or when people mention that or when we mention it, they don't know exactly what it is. But it's it's what it sounds like it is. It's creating an experience. You know, with your brand, right. so people can you know touch, taste, and feel right. See if they like what what you're putting out. Right. And um, I think 
for the most part, tying all of this together, experiential marketing is like the last, you know, it's like the last step. Once you got your message right, once you understand what customers you need to reach and, you know, all of these strategies are pulled together. Now you take all of that along with your culture of however you're presenting your brand and you introduce that to the market through experiential marketing, Um, you know, and that could be an, an, an event, you know, that you set up with the community, right? you know. Um, it can be uh, with Taste of Atlanta or uh, some of these events. Uh, the Atlanta, I uh, was it the Atlanta Night Market. I think we one of our clients participated in. They actually won an award, which was great. Oh wow! Um, so like m- being sure to include all aspects of marketing, um, you know, with what you're doing. I think you can't get any better than that. No, I agree. And uh, I think from your perspective, I think the kind of sum it up is where you add value to a client is you put together an effective strategy. Mm -hmm. Because most companies that I talk to or seen really don't have a, you ask them for their marketing plan and they uh, uh, were supposed to have that. (laughs) <laughs> or they, you know... They get they, it mixed up with their business plan. Well, they get mixed up with the business plan, but they also, too, don't know where to start or where to begin because it's gotten so complicated. Mm-hmm. And I think bringing someone like yourself in helps to clarify that message and helps to really get a plan in place. Mm-hmm. But it also, too, wouldn't you agree that you have to have analytics, too, to make sure that it's working? Absolutely. I mean, if you don't have checks and balances on, you know, what's working and what's not, you know, the uh, KPIs on things that, you know. Key performance indicators. Yeah, key. I'm so sorry because sometimes we're in in behind the scenes and it's like not trying to talk over, but want to make sure people understand. But if you have those things in place, like you should literally, if it's not working, you should be cutting that out of your program. But who's there to tell you that it's not working? Right. If you have no one there. Wait a, wait a minute here. What? <laughs> You're meeting with clients on a regular basis and checking to see if their marketing's working? Yes. Who are you all? <laughs> what kind of company are you? I mean, my goodness, that's what everybody wants. Right. That's what everyone <laughs> should have. And we're here to provide those services to you guys. So, exactly. you know, um, knowing what's working and what's not working is key. And Absolutely. then, you know, if you are eliminating what's not and refining what is, then, you know, at the end of that, you should be getting those results. And then it's different when you are, you know, say you're you're generating leads, right? You might have a concept that's working. Well, we got these leads or we got these likes. Well, who's working to help you convert those leads and those right. likes into actual sales? And that's a whole other aspect. Like people think that it's like ran together, but it's like it's two different right. um, types of things that you're going to be doing. You right. Know? But, but as a business owner, you get too close to the metrics. Yeah. You're too close to the customer. Yeah. And someone like you comes in that can give it a pol- complete unbiased approach. Right. And sometimes, you know, I'm sure you've probably run into this. Customers don't like to hear the truth. Right. Um, yeah. They they, don't, oh, business owners don't like to know that it's what they've been doing isn't working. It's been working. Or, you know, here's a better one. They, You know, I feel like, well, not a better say way to say that, but it's just like they want to be – they want to come up with, they want to think of, because it's their baby. Of you know, course. we all understand Absolutely. that. So we just help them, you know, make it, that we make them feel like it's their idea. <laughs> well, you get them, sometimes you have to get them out of diapers and get them into training right, pants. Right, you know, or, or get them to ride that bike. Right. You know, the goal, I, I don't think the goal with a hiring a marketing agency is to be completely dependent on them forever. Right. Is to get, get a client to the point where they can be set free. Exactly. And it's you know, like, oh. With a good system in place to grow their business. Right. Absolutely. Because it's like, you know, oh, I, I think I need to rebrand now. Right. Yes. That's that's or, right. Or asking that question when they tell you that, why? Yeah. Yeah. What, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Does it make sense? Or can you add another company and right. this company becomes a sister company? Right. Not necessarily a full-time, you know, rebrand. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I mean, there are so many things that, you know, you would need to look at as a 
business owner, you know, to kind of come to that conclusion. And that's more of getting into the consulting. I put my consulting hat on for that because there's no, you know, there's a way to do it and a way to go by doing it without, you know, stepping on their toes because it is something that they, you know, they believe in and they've came up with. And like, maybe you weren't around when, you know, this idea was birthed, but you know, if, what you're putting out, people are responding in a different way than you think they should, then that's the first indicator that the message that you're sending is not the, you know, people aren't getting it. Right. Um, so that's the first indication that something needs to change, whether it's your brand or the culture within your sure. business or how people are, you know, yeah. Well, and, and I think that's a that, that can be for a future podcast that we have you back for about yeah. rebranding. Uh, but one of the things, too, that we were talking before the, we got started recording and I thought was interesting from you is sometimes it's worth having a discovery meeting mm. for 30 minutes to an hour with a marketing agency. Now, they're not going to give you the how-tos and what-tos, right. but at least give you an honest assessment of what's going on. And, and I know you, like any other marketing agency, is going to do the research before they come in. Right. A, we and do. really give you the facts and figures. Sometimes it's going to hurt a little bit. Yeah. But at least if you have a good assessment, right. then there's a starting point. Right. We stalk you guys before we easy before we come <laughs> before we even meet with you. We know how many likes you have on your last posts and what? how many times you post you, it. No. You come but, in prepared. Yeah. Oh, Mike. Who are you guys? <laughs> you have to. Because, yeah, you, you know, it's it's one thing. I mean, if we look at your page and you're like, well, you know, we have a lot. We're not really getting where we are at in sales. Right. And, like, you know, if you're, constant post- you're, you're posting constantly, but you're not boosted. We, we know when a post has been boosted. You know, right. we can look at the analytics from just from the front end and say, okay, this post was boosted. Right. This post was not boosted. You know, you got you made a post, you got 12 likes, and right. uh, maybe one comment. And right. then the post before that, you know, got 150 likes and 25 comments. Sure. You know, and maybe it was a video and it got 5,000 views. So we, right. you know, we know that. Before uh, you step into the meeting, right. you've got a good sense of what's working and what's not. Right. And depending on if we have the time to do a, more, a little bit more in-depth work, depending right. on what we're trying to do with that particular client, we've also researched your, like, we know who your um, who your competition is right. within a certain mile radius, you know, and what they're doing. So it's, there's well, so many. Wait a minute. Knowing what your competitors are doing? Yeah. Wow. You really have to, it's like a, and... Uh, it's almost like an, you're investigating. Well, well, you know, you're you're becoming like the CIA. Right. I mean, that, that's what a good mar- marketing agency is. Right. You're hiring the CIA right. to come in and stalk, you know, un- <laughs> unknowingly your cost, your your prospect, your your competition. You have to. Well, absolutely. Because if you stop understanding what your customers are wanting, right. You know, that's that becomes a problem. Then you go out of business. Right. Exactly. If you if you don't understand what they want, what their needs are, are you providing those needs to your customers or your clients, um, you become obsolete or they go to the person that's doing it better than you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, you've given us a lot of good things to think about today. I I, I really appreciate it. So if you had to pick, let's say three tips that you can leave our listeners with about growing their business, what would be those one, two or three tips that you could leave them? Okay. Um, make sure your core values match, you know, like your, your why matches up with your brand. Right. That's the, you know, the first thing people can, people, um, they can see a disconnect if it, if it doesn't. Right. And sometimes that causes confusion. Yep. Um, be consistent with your messaging. Absolutely. You know, make sure that what you're putting out is, you know, consistent and it makes sense and it's all flowing. You mean your logo should be on everything? Together. Absolutely. <gasps> even your posts, we, we try to, you know, even right. if it's a small, whatever, just branding, you know, your pictures that you put out. Probably like with your website, phone yeah. number, thing, mm-hmm. you know, important things to get all of yeah. Yes. And then, you know, last but not least, understand, you know, the people that you're targeting know what their needs are 
And, you know, I feel like if you just do those three things, um, you can sit down and brainstorm, you know, out a, a small plan. Absolutely. And, or you can just hire us to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it, but those are just three things that I think, you know, if you can sure. wrap your mind around those top three things, that gets you started. Absolutely. Regardless if you can afford to bring on a marketing agency or a consultant or something Absolutely. of that nature. But this is just for you as a small business right. person. These are things that I feel like. So, so as a professional CIA marketing agent, mm -hmm. who are the people or thought leaders that you're following that get you curious about technology, marketing strategies, mm -hmm. life? But who are some of the people you're following? Yeah, so I follow um, on a personal level you know i mean honestly john maxwell is amazing like Absolutely. i mean i can you know personally wise business wise the man is a genius um i think he is yep. one of the best people if you guys can just watch his videos like you know go to youtube type sure. in john maxwell he's fantastic i'll, I'll meet him one day um and then you know, he's here in atlanta yeah i know one of his his training facilities is is you know, no, not far from us. Right. Um, and then I, I pay attention to the movers and shakers in the tech world. Okay. Like your Mark Zuckerbergs and your Who? Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. And um, what's Jeff? Uh, is it Jim? No, Jim with Amazon. Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. I don't know why I want to call him Jim, but Jeff, especially since he's like, you know, um, Recently, like he, you know, there's a lot out about him, but with yeah. Amazon and how big it's growing. Oh, sure. Um, and Bill Gates. Right. And I loved Steve Jobs. Like, yeah. I still, like, he's just, my heart, you know, was broken when, but yeah. he, th just those people, I mean, you can even sure. go and read some of their books and just get, you know, yeah. tons See, of knowledge yeah. about a absolutely how they were innovators and, you know, how they are innovators and they're changing the world with the things that they create and you can do, you know, just well, and, that, and that's the, the uh, true testament of how good of an innovator they are. Yeah. Their companies that they left are still innovating. Exactly. You know, my, my favorite one is Walt Disney. I mean, who, yes. who in their right mind buys swampland in Florida? Oh my gosh. And look, everybody, I mean, can you imagine? Everybody had to think that man was out Crazy. of his gourd. Now look what he's done. Yeah. And, and there's no slowing down. I watched a I watched a show on him like his whole you know I think it was yeah. a movie no there's a movie yeah. out it might be on Netflix like the whole oh yeah it, well the cool thing about Walt Disney is is the way he started Disneyland was on a drawing he walked into the bank and showed them a drawing of what he wants to create mm -hmm. now probably wouldn't work today right but I have that drawing in my office wow and it's an inspiration still to this day. But like you said, there's the you know no matter who it is, you need to get people that you are influenced by in your right. life. So, TJ, I really want to I really appreciate you taking the time to come in today. Thanks so if somebody me. if somebody was looking for a marketing CIA agent on their team, <laughs> how would they get a hold of you? Um, they could uh, give us. They can actually visit our website um, at www.exquisitemarketing. Was that with an E? That's with an X. It's, oh, there's no E? Okay. There's no okay. E on it. Just exquisite. Um, okay. Exquisitemarketing.com. Okay. Um, our, you know, information is on there. They can Great. send us a message. Um, they can, okay. you know, uh, contact us to set up a consult. All of our contact information is on Fantastic. there. They can also find us on Facebook, too. Okay. All yes. right. Yeah. Well, TJ, thanks again for coming in and uh, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. You bet. This was great. Thanks. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of the Marketing Made Great podcast. If you want more details about today's show and the resources mentioned, go to www.csmediagroup.com forward slash podcast. Please be sure to send us your comments about the show and follow the link in the show notes to give us your suggestions for future show topics. With your help, we'll continue to only get better. Now, you can contact us directly with your topics at podcasttopics at csmediagroup.com as well if you'd like. 
be sure right now to stop everything and subscribe to the show in iTunes or on your favorite podcast source so you never miss an episode of the Marketing Made Great podcast. While you're there, write us a positive review if you like the show. Also, we're going to ask that you spread the word to your friends about this podcast by visiting us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram with all your comments. Now, when you're posting, be sure to use our hashtag, hashtag marketing made great when posting so we can add the discussion online in all the social media platforms. Now, our show is produced in our studios located in Atlanta, Georgia's premier business accelerator, Atlanta Tech Park. I'm your host, Mark Traeger, and I want to thank you so much again for taking the time to listen to this week's episode of the Marketing Made Great podcast. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show. 